Comet sighting spring is due to give Mars an extremely close shave on Sunday, giving scientists on Earth an incredible opportunity to observe a comet at close range. NASA scientist Michelle Thaler is speaking with us today about the icy wanderer's amazing flyby and what we can hope to learn from the comet. Uh, hi, Michelle. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Great. Thanks for, for being on. Um, so how close is sighting spring coming to Mars um, and when will it be at its closest? Well, Siding Spring was only discovered about a year and a half ago, and when we first saw the comet, we actually wondered if it was on a direct collision course with Mars. It turns out that it will miss Mars by about 80,000 miles, but that's actually only one-third the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Mars will actually be passing right through the tail of this comet. There's actually a cloud of dust and gas around the comet, and if you were on Mars, you'd have a spectacular view. You'll actually see the tail of this comet going all the way across the sky. Wow. Um, and so you mentioned uh, when it was discovered, but how was Siding Spring discovered? Um, so, so who found it and, and, and how, did they, how did they discover it? Well, it was actually found by an Australian astronomer named Robert McNaught, and uh, it was discovered in 2013, and the name of the observatory where he found the comet was Siding Spring. So uh, there are actually many different astronomers that are scanning the sky for tiny little shifts of distant objects. Uh, this particular comet has been coming towards Mars for probably about the last million years, but it's been moving invisibly and slowly. And in fact, it was only just a few years ago that it became bright enough even for a powerful telescope to see. Wow. Um, and so are any spacecraft at Mars in any kind of danger from the flyby? Well, the wonderful thing is the opportunity here. I mean, it's, it's absolutely true that this comet is going very fast when it goes by Mars. And dust particles falling off the comet will be traveling at about 100,000 miles an hour. And Mars will actually be passing right through the tail of this comet. So, of course, we've been modeling if there's any risk to our spacecraft. What we're doing actually is shifting the orbits of our orbiting satellites around Mars so that they're behind Mars when the densest part of the comet's tail goes by. So while we think that the risk is actually very low, we are taking the precaution of sort of using Mars as a shield during the closest approach, which will be on Sunday. Great. Um, and so which probes and rovers will try to make observations of the comet? Are, are all of the the spacecraft going to be in a, in a position available to be able to actually see it, or will only a few? Well, the wonderful thing actually is that NASA has 15 different rovers, satellites, and telescopes that are going to be looking at this comet. And uh, the ones actually on Mars, the rovers, are going to have an amazing view. There are actually five different satellites that are orbiting Mars right now that we're hoping will get some sort of study image. Uh, the, the amazing stroke of luck here is MAVEN. We have a new observatory that's just arrived at Mars, literally in the last few months. And MAVEN can actually study the way this comet will change the upper atmosphere of Mars. We actually think that as Mars goes through the tail of this comet, it'll heat up the atmosphere a little bit. So we are ready. I mean, we, we have all of these different ways of observing the comet, and we do hope to have some images coming out later in the week. Oh, great. Um, and it, that sort of leads into my next question, which is what, what science can we learn from the comet's close past? So uh, MAVEN can study the upper atmosphere, but are there any other things that, uh, that y'all at NASA will be looking at? Well, the thing that I'm really excited about is a chance to study this particular comet. Uh, this comet actually comes from the most distant reaches of our solar system. Comets have been studied by people for centuries. We know they have these beautiful tails that come out of them. Now, what a comet really is, is it's a ball of ice and dirt a couple miles across, and when it comes near the sun, it heats up and gas flies off. These things are incredible because they're older than the planets of our solar system. There was a time when there were just little chunks of things coming together to form the planets. Some of this stuff got thrown way out, trillions of miles, and now it's being nudged back in, falling in toward the sun. But this comet, as far as we can tell, has never been this close to the sun before. It's literally five billion years old, and it's coming in for the first time. And analyzing the comet it will give us clues about how the planets formed. We actually even think that comets have some of the building blocks of life on them. So some of the clues about how we got here, how life itself got here, are hidden in these comets. And we're going to be studying it in every way that we can. That's great. So can we actually see this comet from Earth? Unfortunately, it's very hard to see from Earth. It's not visible with the naked eye at all. You will need a telescope. And the best view is in the Southern Hemisphere. There are actually amateur astronomers all over the world that have been imaging the comet, that have been tracking it. Uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's very close to the horizon, very low in the sky, difficult to see. So uh, the, the best view is going to be from Mars itself, and NASA is very well positioned to do that.
<laughs> That's great. Um, and so would you call this an unprecedented event? I mean, have we seen a comet pass by this, this close to Mars before or, or even Earth? Well, this is actually one of the closest approaches to the inner solar system we've seen in a long time. We've done the calculations, and we think that a, a distant comet like this only comes by Mars about once every 8 million years. So this is a tremendous opportunity. Now, of course, there have been other encounters with comets, especially with Jupiter. Uh, you, about a couple decades ago, we actually saw a comet break apart and hit Jupiter. There were actually explosions on Jupiter that were bigger than the Earth. So this is a rare occurrence. It's something we'll get this close to the inner solar system. That's great. Well, those are all of my questions, and, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Hey, great to be here. Thank you. Thanks. Space.com.